Hello and welcome to the Print on Demand Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Von Arx, here with my co-host, Carrie Egler. And in today's episode, we are discussing common print on demand myths. But we're not just gonna debunk these myths. We're actually also gonna share actionable advice on how you can overcome some common challenges. But first, real quick, before we begin, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review on whichever platform you're listening from. Or if you are listening from YouTube, please like and subscribe. We really, really appreciate it. With that, thank you so much. We are so glad you're here and let's dive in. Adrian, we're back. What's going on, man? Hey, man, I am doing good, doing good. Um, let's see, what's new with me? I um, I recently did a soft launch for my program, T-Shirt Legends Academy. Awesome. Um, so that was really exciting. Today we did our welcome call, which was super fun, super cool meeting. Uh, new and existing print-on-demand sellers. So awesome. um, yeah, so that was a really good time. Aside from that, not a whole lot. Um, how about yourself? Man, I was just telling you before the call, we just got a, we just got a, I just got a basketball goal or a basketball hoop for my son. And, nice. and, and like, it's, it's our, our neighborhood is crazy. They, they don't let you have basketball hoops. Uh, what? yeah. Like they're like, they, they look, they think they look too, I don't know, ghetto is the right word mm. or whatever. They're you aesthetically know, unpleasing. Yeah. It's silly. Cause you could buy like a really nice one and get it in ground and all that stuff. Um, so just snooty, snooty people. Mm. Uh, so there's nothing in the HOA or in the covenants that say you can't have like a roll away one and just put it away when you're not playing it. So mm. we kind of, we kind of just risk it for the biscuit. Like we just, <laughs> we just got one yesterday and, uh, we got like a, you know, a nice looking one and everything, but like, it was not fun putting it together. It's been like, it took me like a day and a half to put it together, but my son is out there right now just shooting hoops in the oh. front. And whenever we're done, we're going to have to like wheel it into the garage or like in the backyard or something to kind of hide it. Um, <laughs> for everybody. But, uh, so, so that's exciting, man. I've been playing a lot of pickleball. I'm just yeah. sports, 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 sports all the time. Dude, you're just a jock these days. I know, man. Why was I not a jock like in high, like in high school? Could have had all the ladies, but didn't. <laughs> anyway cool. let's jump in well, man let's do this yeah 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 that's that's awesome so today we are talking about common print on demand myths and i'm sure if you're listening to this and if you've been kind of researching or in print on demand for a while you're probably going to recognize a lot of these so we want to essentially debunk some of the most common ones we hear not saying that they're not all entirely legitimate but we also want to give you guys some actionable advice because it's so easy to say, oh, that's false or that's true. Like we want to give you guys actual advice that you can, uh, uh, you know, apply. So let's start. I'm going to I'm going to take myth number one here. And guys, I'm going to go a little savage here because this is Bring one that it. I hear all the time. And I just do not buy this myth. Obviously, like I've been doing this since 2016 of made over six figures every single year consistently since 2017. Um, actually, I hit my first, yeah, si since 2017. Um, and I just don't buy this at all. The myth is that print on demand is too saturated. Yes, it's saturated. Yes, there are a lot of people in print on demand, but there are also a ton of people making a lot of money in print on demand. And those using very effective strategies are completely outperforming the others. It's kind of like that 80-20 rule, Pareto's law, where you've got like 20% of people getting 80% of the results. So I always hear people say that the t-shirt and apparel market is oversaturated. And I just wanna kind of try to put this tired excuse to bed because I've heard it ever since I started. Literally since 2016, people have been telling me that it's too oversaturated and you can't make money. Yet. I still consistently make five figures every single month in sales. And there are countless other print on demand business owners, including new ones that do as well. Like I, I don't want to like just talk about myself. Like I have a friend who's a seven figure business owner who started their business in 2020 
and they surpassed my results. Like it was, it's so impressive. She got to a million dollars in, I want to say like 18 months or something, like something crazy. And, and during that time, there were a lot of people that were saying like, oh, you can't make money in 2020 and print on demand. It's just, it's just not true. Like it's, it's why would, fa- why would people be buying untrue. t-shirts when they're locked at home? <laughs> well, they did boys and girls. I don't know. They did. Well, they also couldn't go to the store and buy them during that time. So they, yeah. they had to. Um, but it's just something that I've heard for so long. And, you know, ironically, many people that say this, they haven't even tried to start a print on demand business or they gave up on themselves before they saw success. There are a lot of people that that look into it and then they hear these random people giving them unsolicited advice saying, oh, it's oversaturated that they don't even know. Um, and then if you take that at face value, maybe you won't even look into it any further. But what you'll realize is that there's a lot of very successful people here that are doing really well. And they're not going to tell you that it's oversaturated because they're they they're running very profitable businesses. So a, another point I want to mention is that just because one person gave up on themselves before they saw success or didn't even give it a try doesn't mean that's going to be you, the listener. Like you do not need to be that person. There's there's a really a quote that I love that says, do not take advice from people who have not been where you want to go. And I think that's so true. Like, look who's giving the advice. Like, where is this advice coming from? And I think that a lot of the people that will tell you it's too saturated, or maybe all the people that will tell you it's too saturated are either those that never tried or those that gave up before they saw success. This is just an excuse that a lot of people use to talk themselves out of taking action. And it is a prime example of a scarcity mindset. So I just want to quash that. I want to let everyone listening to know that you are absolutely capable of this. Do not let anyone tell you different. If I can do this, anybody can do this. So, you know, like Carrie and I have had a lot of success with this, but we're nothing special. I mean, I'm sure you'd agree, Carrie. We're like we're we're normal guys that just work really hard, and we've we've seen we've we've had results. But like, so anyone can do this. This is this is nothing crazy. So next time you hear someone tell you that print on demand is too saturated, I want you to ask yourself these questions first. Has this person ever even tried starting a print on demand business? Secondly, if so, how long did they try for? And third, what were their results? Did they ever see success during the time that they tried? If they didn't see success, you should not be taking advice from them. Instead, talk to someone who has had success in the space and you'll get very different advice. I promise you'll get very different advice. So yes, t-shirt and apparel is, it is a, a, a saturated marketplace if you're competing with every other t-shirt business in the world. But that's not what we teach. We teach you to carve out a chunk of the market find a subset of that t-shirt or apparel, whatever it is, population, and niche down and target those people. All of a sudden, your competitors shrink significantly. Like if you're just selling a blank black t-shirt, yeah, very saturated. But if you're selling it to pickleball enthusiasts and you create a whole brand around pickleball enthusiasts, dude, you don't actually have that much competition. Pickleball is super, super new. It's growing like crazy and I haven't seen a lot. I know there are some, but I haven't seen a ton of pickleball t-shirt brands out there. So now let me let me shift to the actionable advice. So here are some ways that you can significantly increase your chances of success with print on demand. First, choose a niche and niche down to differentiate yourself from other t-shirt and apparel businesses. Next, Find additional ways to differentiate from competitors aside from just your niche. Maybe you're offering unique products. Maybe you don't even sell t-shirts. Like t-shirts have actually never been my best selling product ever. It's always been either hoodies or hats. Those are my best selling products. Like, yes, the the biggest market is in t-shirts. I think it's what, like over 70% of print on demand sales are like in t-shirts, something like that. I think it's. The last I saw was like 58, 58, 60%, somewhere in there, but it's somewhere in that range of like 60 to 70%. 
Yeah, I don't know the exact number, but it's high. Like it's really high, yeah. Very likely over 50%. However, you can actually differentiate yourself by your products. You don't even need to sell t-shirts if you don't want. You could be known for something else. Um, you know, you can offer unique products. You can create a premium lifestyle brand to differentiate yourself. You can do other things to differentiate, like donating a portion of your profits to a relevant cause to your, you know, your niche, something like that. There are a lot of ways to uh, differentiate yourself from competitors after finding a niche. Another one is lead with value. You know, don't just post your products to social media. Give people a reason to follow you on social media, email, and purchase from your shop. Maybe you offer, maybe you create super helpful content in a specific niche. Let's say you're in the fitness niche and you, you create content around workout tips. Th that's going to be very relevant to your niche and they might follow you for your workout tips and eventually buy something from you. A lot of people don't buy right away or maybe you don't, you don't have a product that they like right away and then you drop a product because they're on your email list and they're like, oh my God, this is fire. Like I need this shirt. And then all of a sudden they become a customer, you know? Um, you want to nurture these people over time, but these are just other ways that you can significantly increase your chance of success. If you're in the, let's say that you're in the gardening niche, you could give gardening tips. If you're in the hiking niche, you can share fun facts about national parks. You know, there's so, or you can share funny, relatable memes about one of the, you know, about whatever niche that you're in. There are so many ways to offer value and attract followers and customers and differentiate yourself. The next tip I would say, the next actionable advice I would say for significantly increasing your chance of success with print on demand is follow a proven, fully comprehensive roadmap. I think one of the biggest struggles for newbies is that they create designs they, they create designs, they build their website, they post their products to social media, and then they just kind of wait for the sales to come in. They hope that people will find them on social media, but they don't really have any strategy for driving traffic or building up their social media following or anything. And sadly, hope is not a strategy. Like you don't want to just hope, you need an action plan. And you know, that 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 strategy of just, building a shop, creating designs, and then just posting your products to social media, that alone didn't work ever. That never worked back in 2016 when I started and it still doesn't work today. Like you need to, you need to do more than that. And that is why having a proven, fully comprehensive roadmap is so valuable. It essentially handholds you through the process. If you're not following a roadmap, I don't blame you for not seeing success. I wouldn't have had success if I didn't follow a proven plan, I would not. And I didn't at the beginning, I didn't follow a proven plan. I went on YouTube and Google for everything. And my first print on demand business failed miserably. We never made a single sale. It was terrible. I made so many, like, like so many mistakes. It's not even funny. So guys, like I, I relate, like I have been there. It was only when I got that roadmap, that fully comprehensive roadmap that as I was able to get myself on track, know where I was and then follow that roadmap. And that's what eventually led me to the, the success that I had. And then the last thing I'll say about this for actionable advice on how to significantly increase your chance of being successful with print on demand is invest in training from experts who have actually been successful in this space. People who have, had, who have created businesses. A lot of the successful t-shirt and apparel brand owners that I know, they invest in themselves. In fact, every six and seven figure t-shirt brand owner that I've ever met has invested in themselves. They didn't go it alone. They did not like just figure it out through YouTube and Google. They invested in training and coaching from people who've had success in this space and follow. they followed the success roadmap that those coaches provided them. Carrie, you have an awesome roadmap. I believe I have an awesome roadmap. And there's a lot of other coaches out there that have really good roadmaps that are going to tell you, this is how I did it. And this is how you can do it too. Um, you know, and I know like, Carrie, you still invest in coaching for yourself because you're always trying to get better. I invest in coaching for myself over the years. I've easily invested over $10,000 in coaching and training. And as I've mentioned before, I'm still part of three paid coaching communities because I believe personally that if you're not growing, you're dying in life and in business. That is just my own personal philosophy. So 
I'm going to, I'm going to drop the mic right there. Just drop um, it, dude. Just drop it. I'm just going to drop the mic there. So end of, end of speech. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I, man, I think, yeah, I think the, uh, not to, I mean, you, you, you said it great. The only, only things that I would say, you know, talking about t-shirts specifically, they've been around since 1889. That's a bajillion years. If you're wondering, <laughs> long time. the average American owns 27 t-shirts. I have too many. My they're bursting at the seams. I bought another one yesterday. I just it's just like <laughs> the the demands there, you know, like it's just t-shirts are going to continue to sell. Mm -hmm. And it's not the, the the silly thing about it is when we see the haters that are like it's so saturated, you can't make money. It's like the t-shirt is not the thing you're selling. You're selling the the design. The design mm -hmm. is what makes it unique. And I know, we're, and you know, there's so many other opportunities with print on demand. We talked about not, this isn't about just t-shirts, but talking about t-shirts specifically, the numbers speak for themselves. We just said 60 to 70% of print on demand orders are t-shirts. That tells you the demand is there. But if you think about it this way, if you've got two canvases and two people paint on those canvases, right? They're both canvases, but they are because they they painted on top of them. They are unique, one of one pieces of art. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were in the canvas business, you could probably go get a blank canvas from ten different companies, and you're selling the exact same product. And you're going to have to compete on price. That's the only way you're going to be able to compete because they're the exact same canvas. But as soon as you put a painting on that canvas it becomes its own unique product that's not competing with the other canvas, right? Mm -hmm. It's a unique design. And that's what we're doing is we're building these brands with unique designs and t-shirts. That's just the canvas that we're painting on. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's all, that's all I wanted to add. The saturation thing is just, it's just silly. It's, it's, it's silly. Pick a niche, differentiate based off your niche, your customer, you know, all these different things that we talked about and, and you'll do great. Yep. hundred percent. Okay. Myth number two, the profit margins are too low. Yeah, I mean, this goes right, goes right along with, with everything we've been talking about. It's just what we see so often is if, if the haters aren't saying it's saturated, they're saying the profit margins just aren't there. But I just got, I just got a one news flash for you. And we, I mean, you know where I'm going with this. Yep. If you're a business owner, guess what? You get to charge whatever you want. You can charge mm -hmm. whatever you want. You set the mm -hmm. price. So you're not at the mercy of these prices. Just you set your own price, right? If the t-shirt costs $20 to get fulfilled, just charge 40. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not that hard, right? Like we, I know we think as a new brand owners or new apparel, you know, print on demand sellers, we think like people won't buy this at this price. I have to make it low cost. That's just not true, right? It's just not no. true. Um, you can set your own prices and you know, what you might be thinking is like, how, how do, if I'm going to charge a premium price and by the way, I actually think the profit margins are really good on a lot of print on demand products. And we just did an episode, go back and, and uh, listen to that episode. If you haven't already, it was episode number nine and it was on high profit print on demand products. We just covered a couple really good ones, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of really high uh, margin print on demand products, but I, yeah, I think I think the, the margin in general is is, pre, is pretty good on a lot of print on demand products. But um, how do you sell at those premium prices? And it's through creating a uh, premium experience and through like focusing on the benefits of your brand. And there are many ways to do that, right? Your imagery and your mockups, having higher quality mockups. Mm -hmm. uh, one that I I just put out a video on that's like one of the most important things you can do: social proof and reviews having more social proof creates that FOMO. People see other people like them buying your products. They're going to want it, right? Mm -hmm. um, focusing, again, focusing on the benefits and not the features, talking about how your product's going to benefit them, having a professional looking, uh, trustworthy, optimized website, having great customer service, having quick shipping, having good quality, all those kind of things um, and, and so much more. Um, you mentioned earlier, one this super side tip, but a way to increase perceived value charge higher prices. Uh, you mentioned earlier, if you were like a health coach and you were doing tips and advice, man, thinking about a good strategy, thinking about if there's any piece of digital content you could add into your products to where when they buy a t-shirt, let's say they get a 
free ebook with that, right? Mm -hmm. You can add value to that. Um, yeah. You get a free consultation, you get a, I mean, whatever, a free course with it, or even if it's just a PDF that has, you know, the top 10 tips for having a healthy, a healthy dog, right? They just bought mm -hmm. the dog t-shirt, but hey, we're going to give you our 10 tips, you know, PDF uh, for keeping your dog healthy, whatever, those kind of things add additional value. And so stop thinking, how can I lower my prices? Start thinking, how can I increase the value so that it can charge yes. premium prices? Yes. And so, um, and, 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 you know, the, but the biggest thing here is just like set your pricing where it's going to be profitable, set your pricing where you will make profit and then figure out, don't, don't think, how do I lower it? Think about how do, how can I sell it at this price? What mm -hmm. can I do to make it sell at this price? Uh, and you'll do great. I, I don't think, I think in general, the profit margins aren't too low in general, but if you're feeling that like increase the value. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was really well said. I totally agree. Like you just said it so well, like don't, don't lower your prices, increase your value, increase, mm -hmm. or even the perceived value, you know, because people are buying online, they don't get to touch, feel, try on these products. So you might have to focus on perceived value, what they're going to get and then deliver on that. But yeah, I mean, Man, how much more important are reviews when you're buying online versus going in the store? I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, oh my gosh. And in fact, you know, most people, when they go into stores now, they're actually on their phone, researching the product, looking for reviews. It's mm -hmm. like, man, reviews. Yeah. You, you just said it so great. It's like, you go to a website, you can't actually try on a t-shirt or try on a product. You have to rely on the reviews from mm -hmm. actual people who have received the product and can give you like that real feedback. And so it's just so important that you, um, that you do these things and that you really create, you really think about the entire experience that people are having on your website and how you can increase the value and make them want that product more. Yeah. And I just think about myself, like shopping online. Like if I go to one website and a t-shirt is let's say like 20, 29 99. Cause I would just personally never buy like a $18 t-shirt. I, if, if it was online, I would be like, it's probably just crap quality. And I'm just not even going to try. I'm not even going to try. So th that's just me personally. And I think there's a lot of people like that too, that like the price there's perceived value with the price. So if you're, you know, if you're dropping your t-shirts, if you're selling them for like 15, 20 bucks, I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, it's probably really low quality. And, and that might actually detour them. Um, I prefer higher quality t-shirts. Like I'm wearing a Lululemon t-shirt right now. Cause I, because I wear t-shirts all the time and I, I really appreciate the quality and I'll pay more for that. But yep. I'm just thinking about myself shopping online. If I see a t-shirt, let's say it's $29.99 and it has zero reviews and it's on a website that looks a little sketch, a little sus, not too sure about the website. It doesn't have any social proof. The, the images are low quality, a little grainy. There's not really any branding here. And then if I see a t-shirt on for let's say $34.99 on a website and it looks like the same shirt or similar and it's on like this high quality website with like 50 reviews and it's got social proof and it's a real they've got good imagery and lifestyle imagery people that look like me wearing the t-shirt that allow me to imagine myself wearing it I would very likely go to that one for $34.99 because I, I wouldn't trust the $29.99 one as much. Um, and, you know, I, I believe there was, there was a, I forget where I saw this, but I, I saw that a lot of times when people are presented with three options, like low, medium and premium options, the majority of people go with the middle because yep. they think the low is going to be the cheap and they're going to be disappointed. The premium they think is too expensive and they feel safe in the middle. And I just feel like a lot of people might feel like that with clothing as well. Mm -hmm. Like people see other print on demand sellers, see other print on demand sellers, sellers selling t-shirts for like 15, maybe $16. And they're like, Oh, how can I compete? It's yeah. like beat them in every way on the value proposition, like, Oh, you know, over deliver on value and perceived value. That's how you compete. You do not need to lower your price. A lot of people aren't even going to consider those t-shirts. Yeah. Um, you just got to be better in, in those, uh, those ways of raising value and perceived value. 
Hit us with myth number three, Adrian. Cool. Myth number three, you can only make sales if you run paid ads. Now, Boo. let me just say, <laughs> we love paid ads. To, be, to be fair, to be fair, paid ads are awesome. If you have a winning t-shirt, paid ads are going to take you to a whole other level. Like they are an absolute game changer. I like to think of them as amplifiers, mm -hmm. but until you find that winner, and even if you have a winner and, and you're not comfortable running paid ads, or you don't know how to do them or anything, there are definitely lots of ways to make free organic sales. You can leverage free marketing channels to drive traffic to your website. This is what I love about things like social media. Social media is like free real estate online. You can post to social media all you want. And I'm just talking about social media. There are actually so many ways to drive traffic, but you know, just social media alone, you can, you know, it allows you to publicly create and share like valuable content that can drive traffic to your website. There's potential for your post to go viral. There's the ability to easily build relationships with influencers. There's the ability to easily build relationships with customers through DMs. There, you know, you can pretty much DM anybody. You can even DM celebrities if you want, you know? Um, you can collaborate with other brands, influencers, or creators to get exposure. That's super popular. A lot of people, when they're launching a new brand or new products, they'll reach out to a bunch of influencers in their space and be like, hey, can I send you a new product? Like, we're a young new company. We're really passionate about baseball. And, you know, we were just hoping to, we could send you some product and you can maybe give us a shout out or something like that. There's so many ways that you can work with different creators, influencers, or other brands, like partner up with them. And there are a ton of niche specific communities that you can join, engage with, or even create yourself. There are just so many ways. Um, I feel like this could and should be like an episode on its own. I think in the future we should do one and, and break down different marketing channels and talk about them. But that's kind of what I have for this one. Yeah, I'm going to keep it on rolling. Myth yeah. number four, it's cheaper to print your own t-shirts. Talking about t-shirts specifically, not just print on demand. Um, man, yeah, this, this one's uh, super common. People just, uh, yeah. You know, it's interesting because if you just look at it on the surface, yes. In theory, it's cheaper to print your own t-shirts. Mm -hmm. It does can potentially give you more margin. I think definitely people, number one, don't think about the whole picture. If you're going to print them yourself, number one, you got to invest in equipment. You got to have the right equipment to do it, which I would argue if you're brand new, even your quality, the quality of it's probably not going to be even on par with print on demand because there's going to be a learning curve. It's going to be difficult. If you're just doing a heat press or something like that, it's like, ah, is the quality going to be there? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but you got to invest in equipment. And then another thing people don't think about, well, a couple of things people don't think about, um, ink in your printer and paper for your shipping label and bags to put your items in. And, you know, like uh, little, little stickers that you have to put the shipping label in or tape it to the, you know, tape to put it on there. And mm -hmm. then the biggest one that people don't think about is their time actually mm -hmm. fulfilling the orders. Now, I think every, most people listening to this, you, you, you're aware, but with print on demand, you don't have to do anything. You literally just create the product and sell it. And then you don't have to do anything. It's all done for you. So when you're looking at these prices on print on demand websites, you're looking and you're saying, you know, uh, oh man, this billing canvas on print printfuls, 13 bucks to have. Now you got, first of all, you gotta understand that's printed, folded, packaged, shipped like you didn't have to even drive to the post office to drop off the orders they're doing it for you so you're when you when you factor in all that and you start to really break down the costs of print on demand and you go okay this t-shirt probably costs three bucks printing it at probably costs two let's say another two dollars that's five dollars the shipping materials maybe that's another dollar that's six dollars the labor that they're paying to actually print this t-shirt that might be another 15 20 bucks who knows mm -hmm. i mean even conservatively let's say it's three or four dollars right you're already approaching ten dollars in cost right there right it's just it doesn't make sense to do it yourself 
when you're just starting out and especially if you are a new print on demand seller and it's really not cheaper because you're you need to value your time at such a high level as a business owner as an entrepreneur right your time is very valuable and mm -hmm. you only have so much time that you can you can put into your business and you need to focus your time on revenue generating activities like marketing and the things and, and one thing we just talked about improving your product pages improving the product experience which is going to increase conversion rate which is going to bring you more sales right so focusing on these needle moving activities and and things that will actually make an impact to your bank account and make your bank account larger mm -hmm. fulfillment and printing your own t-shirts is not one of those things so leave it to the pros right and and it, mm -hmm. so it's in theory, it's cheaper, but when you really factor in your time and how much your time is worth as a business owner, it's definitely not cheaper. And last thing I would say is, um, you know, just, just like I have a, I actually have a spreadsheet where I've broken it down and I've actually mathed out like my, you know, what, what is, what is the actual cost of a t-shirt if I were to do everything myself? And it's, it's pretty shocking. Like it was considerably higher than I would pay with print on demand. And another reason I didn't even mention here that I'm just thinking of, I want to mention is remember when you're printing your own t-shirts, you have to usually order these t-shirts in bulk and you're going to have to, you're just guessing on sizes. You're just completely mm -hmm. guessing. So there's all, there's always wasted products. And what I, what I mean by that is you might, let's say you order 50 t-shirts. You literally are just guessing. You say, I think I'm going to need 10 smalls and 10 mediums and 10 larges and 10 XLs or whatever. And you got 50 t-shirts, but then all anybody wants is medium and larges or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want smalls and XLs and you're just left with that product uh, that you may just end up losing out on. If that t-shirt isn't popular anymore or whatever the case may be, you can't sell those sizes. They just sit and you just lose that money and that's wasted product costs where with print on demand, you, you just sell one order at a time. You only pay for orders that you sell. You only pay for products that you sell. So that's another thing. So it's just like when you really start to break down the numbers, it's pretty shocking to discover that print on demand really isn't more expensive. In most cases, mm -hmm. it's cheaper, especially when you start to put out some volume and your, your time as a business owner becomes more valuable. Was that a mic drop? That was, that was well said. That was well said. I, you know, I think to summarize, really, your time is much more valuable working on the business than in the business. Yeah, absolutely. Like, think about if, if you had to hire someone on an hourly rate, let's say you had to hire one person for, um, for, for or one person to print. Let's say you hired like someone who is just like, they just printed shirts like, in, on a DTG, and then you hired another person to do the marketing. Who do you think would you would pay more for? Probably the marketing. Am you I would wrong? pay significantly more oh, yeah. for the marketing yeah. person. Like you can hire people to print shirts for probably sure. like ten bucks an hour, but if you want like an effective marketer, you're gonna have to pay them a whole lot more. I than would that. say minimum sixty, seventy grand a year on full time. That's like bare minimum. Yeah. But like you can be that marketer or yeah. you can be the printer that that's working for $10 an hour. That's true. Valuing the valuing the activities in your business. I've heard many people teach that it's such a good tip. Whereas if, yeah. if you actually sat down and you you just made a chart of $5, $10, $15, $20, whatever, whatever your chart looks like, what activities are worth? And you might yeah. say, OK, uh, printing T-shirts, that's a five dollar activity. Uh, packaging, that's, that's like a $1 activity as anybody could do that. Right. But then yeah. you go like, okay, marketing, oh man, that's a $20 activity. You know, and you start to add, totally. you, you start to just kind of like categorize these things, right? Customer yeah. service, that might be a five yeah. or a $10, maybe, a, maybe it's a $10 activity, right? Maybe it's on the lower end, maybe a little mm -hmm. more important, you know, those kind of things. Like you start to really look at that and it, it, man, it brings so much clarity and you can mm -hmm. really see that you as the business owner need to be focused on the, the higher value activities. hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's the first thing I outsource is customer support mm -hmm. when I'm scaling a business. So in my two businesses, both the first thing that I outsourced was customer support. And that just freed up so much time, so much more time to spend on marketing and other revenue generating activity, like dropping designs and stuff like that. Yep. Um, there's a really good book that I, I don't know if you've read it, Carrie called the E-Myth by Martin Gerber nope. or Michael Gerber. Sorry. 
It's called the E-Myth, Why Most Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. And essentially the entire premise of that book is that you need to work on the business, not in the business. Yeah. And I think that is where the print on demand model really shines over something like printing from home. Like if you want to print from home, if you're enjoying it and maybe it's like a, an outlet for you, maybe you actually find it really enjoyable, but like if you're not finding it enjoyable, if you know, you're, it's not the best use of your time as a business owner. There's so much more you could and, and should be doing really. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I don't want to, like, I'm not trying to throw shade on all the people out there printing their own shirts because Nothing that's wrong totally with that at all. cool. Like yeah. it's totally fine. It's at the end of the day, it's totally up to you, but we're trying to make a case for why print on demand actually makes more sense um, than printing your own shirts. Um, and there's In so much cases. more we can talk about with this. Um, I, I won't, I won't even like, there's so many more things I want to say, but yeah. we, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Um, I'll move on to myth number five is that print on a man has poor print quality. People are like, Oh, the quality sucks. And okay. There's, there's two main points I want to make about this. First of all, it depends on the printing technique. So print on a man generally uses DTG or direct to garment printing, which is a method that sprays ink onto garments and is similar to printing on paper. And there are a lot of pros to direct to garment. It's great for complex multicolor designs. It's generally better than something like screen printing for complex multicolor designs. The designs remain uncracked over time, unlike some other printing techniques like screen printing. Designs aren't stiff and they feel more comfortable for the wearer because the design is just, I, I don't know how to say it, like baked into the fabric. It's sprayed on there. It's not like well, a I think hard sale. Everybody's, okay, if you've ever had that t-shirt, I mean, lots of people have, it's got the thick ink and you know, it's got <laughs> big blocky text and you put it on. Well, for me, it's always, I get, I sweat a lot. So yeah. like if I sweat, you feel that ink, it's sticking on the inside. It's like sticking to your body. It's whereas like, like a t-shirt will like absorb your sweat, you know, like it kind of absorbs it. But if you have that big blocky text, it like sticks and it's, oh, it's so gross. That's such a gross feeling to me, but that's screen printed because screen printed is, is like thick, nasty screen printing is not bad, but it's, yeah, it can be very like thick and heavy right. and it can feel really gross, especially if you sweat. Anyways. Yeah. And, and we're not trying to hate on screen printing. I actually no, think awesome. screen printing is awesome. Me too. I'm just Same. trying to say where some of the areas that direct to garment shines is like when, when making a case against screen printing, which I, I do both and yep. I, I love doing both. I think some shirts look better screen printed and some look better with DTG. But um, I also think DTG is the best technique for printing full color photographs, which is great for personalized products. So if you have like a personalized product of your dog on your shirt mm -hmm. or of your partner or something like that, it's going to be better than way better than trying to do that screen printed. I think most screen printers probably wouldn't even do it. They're like, no, we can't do a, a full color photograph on screen printing because screen printing, the more colors you use, the more complex it gets, the more expensive it gets. And it just wouldn't look good yeah. like uh, DTG would. So, but that said, there are some things to be aware of with DTG. So first, prints on dark and colored garments can sometimes appear less vibrant and a little bit grainy versus screen printed designs. So that's one area where screen printed can outshine. But in my opinion, it's not enough, you know, like it's it's not like you shouldn't do, you shouldn't put any print on demand or any direct to garment designs on dark or colored garments. That's what we put most of ours on in MyStar. And those are our best sellers and we don't get a lot of returns on them. Um, sometimes the pre-treatment can react to the garment and can leave an obvious stain. This should be caught by your print provider, their quality control, and this should not be sent to your customers, but that's not always the case. So you hear some people being like, oh, you know, I, I, my customers all, or I had a customer complain about the, this square, this like yellow square around their shirt or something like that. That's a defect from your print provider. That should not have been sent to your customer. Um, and DTG doesn't work well with all garment types, such as polyester garment and other sports shirts that have a low cotton content. It's made to work well with 
cotton shirts. Mm -hmm. So there, there are things that you got to be aware of. Um, if you are concerned about quality, just order samples from one or a few print providers. Check it out for yourself. See if what, you would be happy with that quality. I would just jump in real quick and just say, yeah. and, I, and actually you're about to talk about uh, print providers, but mm -hmm. don't, <laughs> I think a lot of people, they maybe order one sample from one print on demand. It's like maybe they're starting out or whatever and they go to one, they go to this print on demand. They're like, I want to order one sample. And when they get that one bad sample, they immediately think direct to garments garbage. It's like if you actually try out three or four or five print on demand providers, mm -hmm. what you're probably going to see is pretty drastic quality differences uh, between those. Um, yep. And I, I, man, like I've done, I feel like I've done so many reviews on YouTube of all the different print on demands. There was one where we did like, we did a quality shootout. I think it was the top 12 or something like that, 10 or 12. And to actually just order the t-shirts and see all the same design side by side, mm -hmm. um, man, it's like, they're so different. They're yeah. just so di I mean, you could have the same red. You know, I have this taken perfect action tee. That's what I would use in these reviews. And it's the same red color and one would be orange and one would be pink <laughs> and one would be like, like crimson and one would be bright red. Oh, there's, that's the right color. And then, you know, it's just like, don't you know it's it's not necessarily dtg that stinks you got to find a print provider that has consistent good quality and one that you can rely on um that can make a big difference you can just get you can get such different results that's it's the same so with screen that. printing though same with screen printing right it is oh dude man what? okay so we i i want to tell like a really really quick story so when we were looking for local screen printers in the phoenix area um for our best selling products we actually tested three different screen printers and one they their sample was absolutely brutal i was like there's no way like this is your sample like shouldn't that be where you're like a little like you do make an sure it's extra good quality <laughs> check because this could lead to a huge order coming your way and um then we did another one that was really good. And my brother and business partner was like, oh, maybe we should like spread the order across two different local screen printers so that we're kind of diversifying. We have two different people to go with in case one does something or raise their prices a lot or ends up being really bad quality. And so we actually like, this was a, such a red flag when we ordered that like first one and like, it was brutal. So we asked for a second one. And we were like, this is a terrible sample. Like, I don't know what happened. Maybe this was a mistake, but this is just really, really bad. Can you guys send us another one? And they sent one and it was like better, but it wasn't as good as the other one. But we wanted to by, play it safe and diversify by spreading our order across two different uh, local screen printers. So we ended up ordering like half of our stuff with the one that was the better one and half with the one that had a really terrible sample and then had a better second sample. And man, that company like, it was it, that we should have listened to the red flag. We made a massive, massive mistake. The quality was terrible across the board with that screen printer, like terrible. I was like, how do they get any customers? And how does anyone ever go back to these guys? Like it was way worse than even some like bad DTG stuff. Like they, they made so many mistakes. They literally missed design elements on the shirt altogether. Like they were just not in there. And then like there was an uneven distribution of ink, like the screen print ink, it was really heavy in some areas and really light in others. It was so bad. We actually had to like, like we had to donate a whole bunch of that product. Oh, we didn't want to like throw it out, but we knew it wasn't sellable and they weren't going to give us, um, they weren't going to give us a refund on it. So we're like, okay, well, we're never using you guys again. And yeah. then we had to end up just eating the cost for it. One of the things I've seen with, screen printing like i've seen this so many times uh, in my own orders especially is um you order like 100 t-shirts and the way that screen printing works is you know not to get deep into it but you have this screen that has these little tiny holes in it and you're pushing ink through those holes to basically make an image and um it's it's a it's not always a manual process but in many many screen printers they, they're doing it manually mm -hmm. um you can get these big automatic presses but <laughs> they're working in these warehouses that, you know, I mean, not always the, not always maybe the, the, you know, they're not 
super high end employees always. And these facilities sometimes, a lot of times don't have air conditioning. I mean, they're like, Mm -hmm. they're just, it's just a warehouse. And so if the tiniest speck of dust hits that screen and you print those t-shirts, it's like, you'll just get an extra dot or something, you know, something gets in that screen. And so I've had runs where like a hundred t-shirts and like 75 of them have just this spot of white in the, or spot of red, like a random, it's like, where did that pixel sneak in there or something? It was just like, <laughs> you know, whatever happened when they, when they burned the screen or something, they had some dust in there, something along those lines. And then, um, and then the other thing I think it's important for people to know as we, as I, I'm just wrapping up my thought here, but important for people to know that when you're screen printing, you're not relying on a machine to, to pick the right color as you are with DTG. You know, it's a printer. The printer is just trying to match the color based off of, you know, the, the art, the digital art and everything with screen printing, they're literally going to a shelf that Mm -hmm. has about a hundred different colors of ink. And they're looking at, they're holding up a paper of some of your design or a laptop. And they're just going, "Mm, I think it's that red. I think it's that blue, you know, like it's clear. And it's like, I get some weird colors on screen printing sometimes, you know, and like a, a lot of, uh, a lot of screen printers, if they're smart, they'll have you actually submit the actual color code and everything, you know, the, 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 the actual tone of that color. Um, and, and that does help, but it's still sometimes there to get those exact colors. They're having to mix inks together and different things. Yeah. You can, man, you can get some odd colors. So it's not, people like to complain about DTG color, but it's, man, you can get some weird stuff on screen printing too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And just taking it back to DTG and, and kind of going on what you were saying, like a lot of the times it's not DTG, it's the print provider. Like not all print on demand providers are pretty equal. I worked with a really, really terrible one for a while and I stuck with them because they had super low prices. We were one of their top performing clients. And so we were able to negotiate like crazy good deals. And it actually got to a point where the quality was so bad, so consistently that we were like, this is absolutely affecting our brand. This is going to affect repeat customers. And in the long run, this just is not good for our company. And we switched and we paid significantly more for fulfillment costs um, to go to Printful. So we moved over from this company to Printful and it was one of the best things we ever did. We got more repeat customers, higher you know, higher customer lifetime value, our brand, we were able to increase our prices because the quality was better. And we were actually able to like match the perceived value that we showed online. And we were able to have branding options. Like we were able to do so much. I only wish we switched over sooner um, because margins, like if you're only making one sale per customer and no customer ever comes back, that is a recipe for failure, in my opinion. Like your goal should be to try to get customers back as many times as possible. Really, like there's three ways to make money. You can get more customers, you can increase average order value, or you can get your customers to buy more frequently. And if you can't do that third one, that's going to really, really work against you. And that's where quality really matters. So like, like Carrie said, not all print providers are the same. Many times, it's the print provider that's the reason for the poor quality, not the actual technique. So this is why it's so important to select a print provider with a good reputation and make sure that you order some samples to to make sure that you're happy with the quality. I would recommend ordering more than one just to kind of, you know, see. Um, but do you have any more thoughts on that, Carrie? No, man. I think that covers it. Those are, uh, I think, five really five. good, uh, really good myths yep. that we busted. We just did, we busted. just destroyed them. Okay. We just destroyed those myths. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's, you know, a lot of the myths, there is some legitimacy too, but you can very easily bust them with some common logic too. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, these are probably things that people that are looking into this hear all the time. And so it's so nice to hear, you know, to be able to share is people have had success with this. There are so many people having success with print on demand. And it's nice to share with people and let them know, like, no, like you can absolutely like these, these myths are just excuses. Like do not let them hold you back, get out there, take action. 
try it for yourself. So I, uh, let me leave you with this. I taught, I actually, I had a meeting with, um, with a print on demand company. I'm not, I don't know if I'm at Liberty to share the, I think that these numbers are public, but I'm not going to say them. I'm not going to say who it is, mm. but a big print on demand company, um, the other day, uh, about some stuff, some work that we're doing together. And <clears throat> this should give you, a, I guess, a lot of proof of how good, like how I'm um, like great print on demand is doing, because this is reflective of the people selling me and you and thousands and thousands so of others. others. Yeah. This was one print on demand company and they're hitting peaks of 10,000 orders per day, 10,000 orders per day from this print on demand goals. company. Those and, are goals right there. Yeah, it's just like like this is a really big print on demand company, but it's like and they're not even they're probably not even in the top 10 biggest. And uh and and ten, you know 10,000 orders per day, you're just like man, these are me people like me and you selling. Like print on demand is growing each and every year mm -hmm. and um and and it, you can look at some of those numbers and Printify and Printful publish their numbers every year and you can actually go look at a lot of their like revenue numbers and sometimes they'll talk about those order numbers and they'll talk about black friday and what those holidays look like and print on demand is healthy it's always growing more products all those kind of things and so um don't use these myths as an excuse to not start mm -hmm. or to not take action like do it do it i i yeah a hundred percent i just hope that this episode talks some people out of not taking action that, that's go. that would be my hope for like anyone listening to this if you were on the fence about whether you print on demand and and that something here sways you to say screw it i'm going for it good for you like i i hope that that's the outcome of this episode so i guess we'll wrap it up there carrie if there's nothing else um, thank you so much for listening. You guys are so awesome. This is episode number 13. We just love doing these episodes. We've got so much more coming for you guys. Please like comment on YouTube, like, like comment, share, and follow us on podcasts. Um, we don't want you to miss an episode and we are always here to help. So if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out, DM us on social media or comment on the YouTube videos. We love you guys. Thank you so much. And we will talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. If you could, please leave us a review and follow the podcast on whatever platform you are watching from or listening on. Uh, we're putting out brand new episodes each and every Friday. So you want to make sure if you're on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify that you're following the podcast. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and you can also hit the little bell icon to make sure you get notified when new episodes release. Every Friday, we're here. We're bringing you content. Thanks for listening today and we'll talk to you soon. Hey.